I think, Mike, that could work against the Wings tonight because Kansas City is going to be hyped up. Uh, they're just a couple of games behind Wichita in the Western Division standings, and they definitely want to prove to the Wings that, hey, you're not out of our class. We can play with you. We can beat you, especially here in Kemper Arena. I think probably the game last Tuesday at the Coliseum, more indicative of what we'll see tonight, a tough, hard-nosed defensive game, fairly low scoring possibly, and it will probably go right to the wires. You saw off the top the goal by... Jorgen Christensen tying it just about a minute away from the finish, and then 13 minutes into overtime, Kim Runtved with the winner. Roy Turner and Rick Benben, the two coaches. Roy at the left of your screen, Rick Benben in the coat and tie just to the right there as they're about ready to go also. Starting tonight for the Wings will be Seamus McDonough right there with Roy in goal. Actually, it would be Jan Olison's turn tonight, but Jan has a thumb injury, and so he is suited in case of an emergency but is not expected to play. The defenders will be Tommy O'Neill and Kim Runtvid starting out tonight. Jorgen Christensen and Mike Fox at midfield. And Eric Rasmus in the forward. You see him standing next to Kansas City starting forward at midfield. Keith Furphy, along with Furphy, Stuart Lee up front, Ty Keo and Gino Schiraldi, the defenders. Angelo DiBernardo, the midfielder. And Alan Mayer, who we talked about in the pregame, in goal. Actually second in the league in goals against average, but first among the goalkeepers playing on a regular basis, a virtually every game basis. And the Wings with the opening kickoff. That's Jorgen Christensen to Tommy O'Neill. And we are boarding guard. We'll get it back to Espinoza. Wings passing game looking very crisp so far tonight, Mike. That's usually a good sign. And a pass by boarding guard. Cal boarding guard who has scored only six goals this season, and every one of them has come against Kansas City. They call him the Comet Killer. Cal boarding guard, he's got a smile there. His brother Christian in the crowd tonight drove up from Wichita. And here you see the replay. Chico Borja feeds a nice pass into Kel Bordingard. He takes it off his right foot and places the ball perfectly. Actually, I'm a bit surprised that Alan Mayer didn't get to that. His quick reactions usually would have snuffed that off. Here's the other angle. Borja to Bordingard and a nice shot to the far post. I think Mayer thought it was going to go wide. He's angry with himself. And Kel Bordingard has a goal. The score, wings one, Comets zero. Huh. Chico's 39th point of the year as he remains among the league leaders. Started the night in fourth place. That will not move him up yet. He needs five tonight to catch Bronco Segota of San Diego, who is third. Kansas City now trying to get something going. Gino Schiraldi, who is being tabbed for all-star honors here in Kansas City. But the wings break it up. Abraham to a nice team for Murphy. the score just 14 seconds later. Check that, 24 seconds later. Kansas City had gone over 104 minutes without scoring a goal. Furby with the left-footed shot. Ripples the nets. And that's just a case of him getting loose from his defender. Let's see who didn't pick him up there. Looked like they good pass by the Comets and it just beat Mike Fox covering his defender. There was no one between Furby and the goal. And he just picks apart Seamus McDonough with a good hard left-footed shot. Good play by Kim. A little too deliberate that time. He was trying to get it out on the right side to Chico Borja. The penalty down to 20 seconds. Borja with a good look at it and just a little high. Christensen keeps it alive to run fit. Kim's shot wide. And Ty Keogh will clear it out. And that's going to pretty much do it in the penalty. Down to four seconds. And it looks like Kansas City will record their 11th straight penalty kill, and they have done so. Borja now, the hard shot in front, boarding guard trying to follow. And Gino Schiraldi, who just came off the penalty box on the attack for Kansas City. He tried to fire one, but it went wide, and Kim Runfed will bring it back. Good line change by Kansas City. They sent Keith Furphy streaking on the substitution, and Schiraldi nearly found him for a big threat there. For the first time tonight, Eric Rasmussen and Chico Borja are on briefly together. However, I believe Chico will leave, and it looks like Terry Nickel will come on for the first time tonight. That was Tim Clark breaking it up for Kansas City. This is Charlie Ficus and Keith Furphy. Al Smith hounding Furphy, and you saw a little of Al's speed as he beat Furphy to the corner and didn't let him turn up toward the goal. That's the end of the first quarter and a good game. It's the Wings one, and the con flashes of promise. Roy Turner rates him as maybe the best forward, including Furphy for the Comets, but really against the Wings, we haven't seen that, Mike. Di Bernardo centering. That was for Haramina, poked away by Borja, and the follow-up by Haramina. 
the guy we were just talking about, and there was a case of someone just not marking him as the ball was deflected back toward McDonough, and Jaramina really kind of got a cheap one there. Nothing fancy, but here you see Di Bernardo will take the ball off the boards. He just centers it into the middle, and Chico Borja trying to follow Jaramina. Al Smith trailing there. And again, you got to keep between the player and the ball, and Damir Jaramina beat both Wichita defenders, Smith and Borja, to the ball there for an easy shot against Seamus McDonough. It's 2-1 to one Comets, 9-31 remaining in the second, and that'll get this crowd back into Frank Rasmussen, and Frank to Christensen, tried to send it across to Runford, but good reaction there by Kansas City's Ty Keough. Eric Rasmussen with a hard blast, great save, Runford with the follow! Tim Runford off the rebound from Eric Rasmussen, and I'll tell you, they were working Manny Schwartz there. Great balls by the Wichita Wings. Great passing in there, click, 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 and the Wings are at their best on this. Let's take a look at the original shot, right-footed by Eric Rasmussen. Great save by Manny Schwartz, but he went all the way down, and Kim Rutman picks it up out of the air. I'll tell you, those are the hardest shots. You pick a ball up in the air, and you can see Schwartz is still down from the original shot. Look at this footwork by the Wings. Jorgen Christensen, back heel pass. Schwartz makes the save. The ball comes right back out to Rutbed. He volleys it into the net. And I'll tell you, Wichita at their best right there. It's 2-2. Two to two. The score tied. Spinoza that was on Kansas City. The old Corbin guard for the Wings. And he's got his third goal, or second goal of the night. And his seventh against Kansas City. What is the deal with Kel Bordingard and the Comets? I'll tell you, he must play. Part of the problem may be that Kel Bordingard is a youngster, new in the MISL, doesn't play with a whole lot of confidence, and he's got tremendous confidence in this building. He's got five goals against the Comets coming in, and here's his seventh right here, two tonight, and Kel Bordingard has put the wings ahead three to two. Let's take another look at it here. Bordigard, great one-on-one -on -one effort, and he just threads the Kansas City defense, and great placement of the ball high into the upper right-hand corner of the net. Manny Schwartz right there, a frustrated young man. His chance to come on. And we have timeout with the Wings leading. It's going to really free up his line mates, which in this case is Chico Borja. They can't afford to pay so much attention to Borja when Kel Bordigard's the big scoring threat he is. And Chico Borja trying to break away. Centers it for Hat trick for Kel Bordingard. He has six goals in this building in two games. Two hat tricks in Kemper Arena. Unbelievable, just uncanny, Mike, that Kel Bordingard now eight goals on the season, all against the Kansas City Comets. Six in this building. And all three assists tonight from Chico Borja. There you see it. Borja feeds the ball along the boards, and Kel Bordingard just good finish. His first two shots were well placed. In this case, he's just reading Borja's pass perfectly. And you see he beats the Kansas City defender to the ball. I think it was Chiraldi. It was. And Kel Bordingard with a hat trick, his second of the year. And only two other Wings players have had hat tricks this season. Borja and Rasmussen. Add to that list, Kel Bordingard, the Runfit, 17 seconds, maybe one last chance for the Wings, although they are not really pressing the ball upfield now, it looks like they may just run out the clock. Christensen is having easily his best defensive season this year, of course he's known as an offensive player, great assist maker. That's going to be it at halftime, the Wichita Wings lead the Kansas City Comets by a score of 4-2. to two. It was Wednesday, January 8th, the night after a tough overtime win against the Kansas City Comets, the Wichita Wings, drained and mentally fatigued, had to come right back and face another battle, a battle somewhat out of their element. As one member of the opposing KQAM, KEYN radio team shows us, this is volleyball. And in front of some 600 screaming Wings fans, just like soccer, the Wings cannot use their hands. I think we're going to have to try and use the feet with the, the head and the thigh and everything else that we can use to keep it up in the air. We don't get to use our heads, but we never get to use our heads. <laughs> and just the battle of who uses their heads a little bit better than well, well, at least for them, for the Wings. Uh, we'll be using our tongues, whatever we can, you know, get out there to... <laughs> well, uh, we might have a few of the old uh, overhead kicks, donkey kicks up at the net, you know, a few, uh, a few of the trick plays coming out tonight, I think. The best two of three, the challenge, the Wings with feet and heads, the radio personalities with hands and whatever usage of the head they deem necessary. To the action, game one, the Wings had an 8-1 to one lead and blew it, although they tried everything, including some bench help. The radio guy is a winner 15-13. to 13. Coach Tommy O'Neill not happy. Game 
number one. What should we be doing? What should we be attacking in that? We're not attacking in that, man. Everybody's got Get behind the ball. Back to action. Game two of the wings still looking sluggish. Even lost faith in their coach at one point. Carried Coach O'Neill out. The wings lost the first one. They're coming back. They're going to win this thing? Yes. They are. How do they look tonight? A little flat, you think? No, they look good. They really do. They've been coming in with some slick moves. But then the wings came alive. It was magical. Catch some of this action. Fans were right. The Wings hung in there and won game two, 15 to 7. Then won game three, 15 to 10. The winners, two out of three. Biggest one of your life here tonight? Well, this has to be one of the biggest. I think all the boys are pulling it, you know, pulling for Tommy. Uh, I don't think Tommy's ever got a victory in anything he's done. So this is this is a big one for him. It's very important. What went right out there? You guys came back on the last two. Absolutely nothing. Okay, here we are with Tommy the Gipper O'Neill. He finally won. So they told me you never win anything, Tommy. They wanted to win it for you. Well, that's true. The lad's done great. I think it was my team talk after the first quarter that really spurred them on. It's so far that is the biggest win in my career. It is. Very much so. Are you going to be able to sleep tonight? Not, not tonight. I'm going out to celebrate. Yes, the Wings were the winners, but St. Jude's Hospital for Children in Memphis was the big winner. $700 collected. We've raised over $400,000 in the last five years through the help of the Wichita community. And because it is truly a local hospital, even though it's located in Memphis, we continue to do this. The reason why the Wings are still here is because of this community, and we never forget that. And uh, if this is a chance, we can, you know, pay, pay a wee bit back. It was a good night of fun and purpose, and the Wings prove once again, no matter what the one-loss record, they are winners in Wichita. Obstruction there. Bocek was not trying for the ball. He was trying to keep Bordigard from the ball. Pikus to Abraham, so has just come back on, and to Keith Furphy. Furphy with a nice move, but sending it way wide. Tiraldi keeping it in, and got a pretty good blast away, but again, too far out in front. Espinoza marking Furphy. Great pass. That's Gino Chiraldi on a great pass from Keith Furphy. Chiraldi having the greatest year of his career offensively gets his 11th goal of the season. Gino Chiraldi, a happy man. Let's take a look at it. Keith Furphy threads the needle. And Gino Chiraldi puts it away with a left-footed chip into the net. Really a deflection. Here's the other angle. Furphy, right-footed. In between Rasmussen and Espinoza. Chiraldi's there. A great pass really created there by Keith Furphy. Who gets the pass. And Gino Chiraldi, a happy man. He's got his career best already. Not even halfway through the season. And already he's tied his career best. We have a test from Keith Furphy. It's now 4-3 to three wings. Furious action here at Kemper Arena. Brought to you in part by Plains Ford, home of the American Truck and Fantastic Sam's, the original family of the quarter against the Wings, 5.23 to go in the quarter. Let's see if that's a foul or a dive. I believe it's a foul. Abrahams went down in a hurry, but certainly more than incidental contact there. Keith Furphy to Abrahams. And Lori Abrahams ties the game with 5.18 to go in the third quarter. A beautiful goal by the Comets, and Kansas City has tied it. Laurie Abrahams, looking very much like the target man he is. You could compare him to Andy Chapman or, or Jeff Gore. Let's take a look at him here. He's got the ball to his, the goal to his back. Al Smith on him. He spins, it hits one post, bounced all the way across and hit the other post to go in. An assist to Furphy on the goal, so his second straight assist. 4-4 game, 5-0-5 to himself off the board. Schwartz coming up, got a whistle, and we've got a... A two-minute penalty, I believe, on Chico Borja for boarding. Manny Schwartz, Borja came in to kick the ball. Along with a little Latin blood in there as Chico. Board just on the other side of the river from New York City. We have halftime, and I mean, third quarter finished, and it's Kansas City for Wichita for now, Statistics for the uh, third quarter there, Kansas City outshot the Wings 13-8. to eight. I have no problems believing that, although Mike Wichita did come back there late in the quarter to have flurries of their own. And uh, five blocks, three blocks by Kansas City. Deflected it away to Di Bernardo. 
Nevertheless, that killed some time. And Frank Rasmussen with the steal. And to Tim Walters, and the Wings really taking some time off the penalty. Rasmussen, oh, he got a short-handed goal by Frank Rasmussen. Unbelievable, the Wings playing with Keith Furphy, who is a good defensive-minded forward, but obviously on this unit for his offensive skills. And Frank Rasmussen puts the Wings up 5-4. to four. Mike, a big goal there for the Wings. There you see, he just received the ball from Walters, and Frank slips the ball just very much like the goal by Abrahams, hits the far post, and it ricochets around. Tim Walters, with great composure, feeds the ball off the upper part of his right foot, and Rasmussen takes the shot immediately, and ricochets into the goal, and that'll really take some steam out of the Comets. Comets coming right back, 5-4 to four Wings now. Are those some happy... Gave the Wings a chance to get reset. They've got boarding guard Borja, Nichols, Smith, and Espinoza out there. Good debut tonight by Al Smith. Regardless of what happens from here on out, he has certainly not played like a rookie in his very first game. There you see him there just trying to win the ball away, and he does. Help get it away from Abrahams. The Comets get it back quickly. Laurie Abrahams back in trying to maneuver, and Al Smith again with the deflection, and Nickel with the lead pass for Borja. Borja racing down with Bonchek, and now Chico seeing that the play wasn't there will wisely bring it back out. Five to four wings, 11 minutes, 13 seconds to go. Mike Fox with another hard blast. Schwartz has really had to fend off some hard shots. He's going to have bruises all over his body. And Fox has had several tonight. Member of the U.S. National and Olympic teams here, Smith. Pretty good maneuvering by Al. Then didn't have the shot. Got it to Borja. Chico tried to drop it for Eric Rasmussen. Schiraldi and Rasmussen nearly stealing it. Now Schiraldi goes down. And Furphy wrestles it away from Rasmussen, but Tommy O'Neill has it. And Laurie Abrahams arguing that Tommy fouled him to get to that one. He played by Kim Rumpf, but Furphy kept it alive and a good alert play by Seamus McDonough. Wings have a chance at a 4 on 2 and they take it. Here comes Kim Rumpf, that's open on the left side. Can they find him? Eric Rasmussen tried to get it there, but deflected by Dee Bernard. And a great move by Eric! That should be the ball game. Kansas City will probably go to their sixth attacker, and it's six to four, Wichita. A great play. Wichita took advantage of a four on two, and Kansas City finally wore down, did not get five men back behind the ball as they've done so well all night. There you see Eric Rasmussen feeds it past Chiraldi, who did get back, but Schwartz came out to cover Rasmussen, and it's cherry picking time for Chico Borja for Borja, his fourth point of the night, and he's back in that league scoring race, his 22nd goal of the evening, 146 remaining, and that's a big, big goal. Now, the game not over yet. Kansas City's certainly capable of scoring two goals in 146, but that's got to break their confidence a little as they fought so hard to get back in this game when they were down 4-2, to two, and now it's back. It was giving Chico Borja a little stick on the field about making the U.S. team. Angelo Di Bernardo, the sixth attacker, wearing the goalie shirt, and Kansas City scores as Furphy managed to get one through a crowd that I don't think Seamus McDonough ever got a very good look at. A long shot by Keith Furphy. Die a long distance, Keith, and he scores home. Let's see how this one happened. Furphy just past the red line, maybe 15 feet. The ball goes through. One, two, three, four. out on this one. They still got the sixth attacker pulled. And with the ball out of bounds, Kansas City will bring it back in. 133 to play. Don't turn your dials, folks. We got a game still going up across the center line. Perfy blocked nicely by Frank Rasmussen. And Di Bernardo wins the race to it, but now he'll have to circle back. Frank Rasmussen really hounding him. Tim Walters trying to help. Charlie Ficus. And people going down all over the place. The foul is on the wings with a minute 15 to go in the game. That clock seems to be ticking awful slow for the Wichita Wings. 1.15 remaining, 6-5 lead. Kansas City with a sixth attacker, and they've already scored one. The Wings can attack at Di Bernardo in goal, and they ought to. Right now, they're trying to kill a little time. Now Tim Walters down in the corner, and he is pounded hard into the boards by Marhedic. No call. Marhedic coming back the other way. Abraham's in the corner centering, but kicked away by George Espinoza. And a classical case of George Espinoza being in the right place. Seven seconds left. Roy Turner sending on Terry Nickel in place of Tim Walters. This is, in essence, a, a one-man extra penalty-killing unit for the Wings. They've got people out there 
are excellent defenders. They tried to lob it in front for Stuart Lee. It's out off of, I believe, Espinoza as he deflected the attempt. And the distribution upfield. Mike Klotz racing with DiBernardo. DiBernardo's the goalkeeper. He keeps Mike Klotz from moving it on down. Frank Rasmussen! Oh, just off the post. Mike Klotz trying to keep it in. And Marhedic keeps it alive. 24 seconds left. Furious scramble right to the end. Laurie Abraham trying to get something going for Kansas City. T. Bernardo to Abraham. 15 seconds. Laurie Abraham deflected away by Nichols. That might be it. The Wings chasing it down into the offensive end. Three-line pass. Stops it with eight seconds left. Kansas City at the red line with eight seconds to go. The Wings leading six to five. Kansas City will probably get one more crack at it. Angelo DiBernardo taking his time to bring it back. And we have just been informed that in the voting for offensive star, it's Kel Portingard with the hat trick tonight for the Wings. And the defensive star of the game, Seamus McDonough for the Wings with 15 saves. And maybe one more to make. Eight seconds to go. Kansas City at the Wings red line. There's Di Bernardo in the goalkeeper's shirt. Pato Marhedic, Charlie Ficus. It's going to be Di Bernardo. And McDonough with another save. That will do it. Two seconds. One. The Wings have won a great soccer game here in Kansas City. Final score. The Wings six. The Kansas City Comets five. And we'll be back as Steve Schott will talk with Roy Turner right after. Coach, you've got to be very happy out there tonight, and, and a great game for both teams. Entertainment value of this game, how do you rate it? Oh, it was a great game, and I think, uh, you know, our game plan was to shut the middle down and break on them fast, and we certainly did that with quality finishing. I think there was a key area in the uh, third period. We'd done a lot of running, and uh, we got caught a little tired, and then we talked about those little things. Power play defense comes through. They're trying to save the ball from going in their own net. They score a goal. What a great goal. When Kansas City came back, you're up 4-2 at halftime. They came back just attacking, attacking, attacking. Was it what they were doing, or was it what you were doing? Well, it was more uh, what they would... They can throw caution to the wing, and the wind, rather. And sometimes we came out slower than we needed to. We've got to stop those full-court presses, so to speak, by getting that ball and breaking on them. And our energy level was down a little bit. We were caught in one end of the field, and it was difficult. But uh, we kept it together. We kept it going, and of course, and now the result is history. But a great result, huh? Great. How do you explain Kel Bordingard? Eight goals all against the Kansas City Comets. Is he a streaky player? Has he just got Kansas City's number, or can he only play with confidence up here? No, I think there's something more. I think he's had a lot of uh, illness. He's had a lot of problems in his family while I've been here. And uh, we said before the game, watch Kel tonight. He's looked like this in practice. Great finishing by him. And uh, that's the type of thing that's going to make... The opportunities come for Borja and Rasmussen. We do have a, I don't know whether you told the viewers, Steve, but we have a big problem now, of course. Chico, 21 points, stupid foul. Nonetheless, he won't be going to Cleveland on Friday, so we've got to go up there and do battle. But let's just uh, enjoy this one for a little while. Congratulations, Coach, and back to you, Mike. All right, thank you, guys. Two quick reminders. The next KSN Family Night, Saturday, January the 25th, as KSN has a little surprise in store for a certain striker player and for your whole family. And one week from tonight, our next KSN Wings telecast from Dallas against the sidekicks. It should be another great one. It's been a great one here tonight. We hope you've enjoyed it as the Wings defeat the Kansas City Comets 6-5. to five.